There you go. Hey guys, welcome back to another challenging um, problem when you're trying to find the inverse of a function. And what well, the challenging part is the algebra. So let's just kind of go through it step by step. When we get to the algebra, then we'll kind of we'll go a little slower. So remember the first step is I'm going to rewrite this as y equals. Look at that cute y. Then the second step is going to interchange all x's with all y's. And you've got to get all of your x's. So I'll do that right here. x equals y squared minus 1 over y squared plus 1. OK, now I have to try to figure out a way to get y by itself. This is tricky because I've got y squareds. I've got minus 1s. You know, I've got these fractions. So. I kind of think of this as like a little maze. It's almost like a maze because there's multiple ways you can go. And some ways you're going to go are going to lead you to dead ends. And one way you're going to go is going to lead you to the final answer. So um, you're going to just have to try to be patient and try different things out. Since I know the answer, I'll kind of go through the right path from the beginning. But I'll try to kind of talk about what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at as a, this is x over 1. I, I always, lo I love to cross multiply. So I'm going to do this times this equals this times this. Some of you, may be, maybe you just see it as you're getting rid of the denominator. So you're multiplying both sides by the denominator. It's the same thing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to write over here. x times y squared plus 1 equals y squared minus 1. Now you have some choices. y squared minus 1, difference between perfect squares. You could rewrite that as y plus 1, y minus 1. You could factor it out. But where's that going to get you? It's not. It's just going to make more y's. And I still have a y squared over here. So not so good. Let's distribute this and see where that takes us. So x times y squared is xy squared plus x. And this, at first glance, looks very messy. And you're like, oh my god, this is a dead end. Don't give up yet. Just go back to your basics. You're trying to get y by itself. We're in a very, actually in a pretty good spot here if you think about it, because it's just y squared on each side. Now that x makes things kind of weird, but don't think of it as x. It's it just, it could be a number, 5y squared. If you had like 5y squared and y squared, you could bring them together, get 4y squared, take the square root. So let's just bring the y squareds on one side, the x on the other. So I'm going to bring this over as x y squared minus y squared. I'm going to bring the x to the other side. So negative x minus 1. Now I can factor out a y squared. See that? Because y squared times x is xy squared. y squared times negative 1 is negative y squared. And over here, I'm going to factor out a negative 1. Just because I don't like negative x's. Now I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 1 right over here. So I'm going to have y squared equals negative 1 times x plus 1 over x minus 1. So far so good. Now all I have to do is take the square root of both sides. Maybe you can hear that siren. Um, boom, boom, and that's your final answer negative 1 times x plus 1 over x minus 1. And if you didn't pull that negative 1 out, you know, you can, um, you can change that. If you don't like that negative 1, you can pull the negative 1 out of here also and rewrite this as minus x plus 1. In other words, 1 minus x. And then negative ones across off. So it's really x plus 1 over 1 minus x. I think that's the way that the answer key had it. So all those are different kind of variations of the same thing. But that's your final answer for your, um, your inverse function. And then you have to figure out the domain. So remember, to find the domain, you go back to the original function. And you find out what the range is of this function. So you have a, a weird thing where you have x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1. And x has to be less than or equal to 0. So that's, that's helpful. So I'm going to go a little, um, I need an eraser. I'm going to make a little chart again. 
I'm kind of combining my uh, little T-chart along with a graph to try to figure out what the range is going to look like. So I'm going to have my x and y. I'm starting with only x numbers that are negative or equal to 0. So let's start with 0. That should be z. When x is 0, this becomes negative 1, positive 1. So when x is 0, y is negative 1. So if I were to graph that, right when x is 0, y is right here. And now we're only going to go to the negative for x's. So when x is negative 1, negative 1 squared is going to be 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. When x is negative 1, y is 0. When x is negative 2, that's going to be 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 on top. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. 5 on the bottom, right? 3 fifths. Did I do that right? Clyde, are you looking? <laughs> Pay attention. I think that's right. So 3 fifths. So when it's 1, y is up a little bit. And then I think what's going to happen, let's just jump ahead to like when x is say negative 10. That's going to be 100 minus 1 is 99. That's going to be 100 plus 1 is 101. So it's becoming this like really, um, it's getting closer and closer to 1, right? It's going from 3 fifths to 99. So I think what's going to happen is it's never going to quite make it to 1. I bet. So it's going to be like... And... Hmm, maybe we did something wrong here. Is this a parabola? Because according to this, the range is going to be just in between here. I think the range should be always less than 1. I think it should dive way down. Because um, when x is 0, oh, no, when x is 0, y is negative 1. I don't know, just thinking about one. You guys figure that one out. <laughs> we'll pause it. We'll figure it out. Maybe. Talk to you later. <laughs>